In his books, uh, Stories for the Journey, William White tells of a European uh, seminary professor and his wife, uh, Hans and Enid. During World War II, they escaped to America. He began teaching in the seminary and everybody loved him, but Enid, his wife, passed away. Hans was one of the greatest professors. Everybody loved him in seminary, but after his wife passed away, everybody said that he just went into a, as kind of a recluse. He went back to himself, and he wouldn't have anything to do, and he started missing his classes. He started missing all the time. And some people went to him and told him, said, said you need to know, said that, that what's the matter? And he said, I'm doubting everything right now. He said, I'm mad with God. I just I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do. And he says, right now I'm even doubting his existence. This is a man that had walked with Jesus. God had saved him out of a very violent place and brought him in and he was teaching in seminary. But when God took his precious wife, he thought, God, why do I need you? God, why would you do that? Some of his colleagues got together and said, would you mind if we meet with you every morning to pray with you and to pray for you? He said, you can pray for me. <laughs> and they gathered up every morning together and started praying for him. Every morning. This went on for a while. One day, they prayed that God would show him why and would help him through it. And he said one morning that he was in there and he was going through and just had been miserable. He said, God showed up in the middle of the night. The next morning, he walked in that day and they said, we're here to pray for you. He said, you don't have to pray for me. You can pray with me now. He said, God showed up in the middle of the night. He said, His presence was so real. He said, I woke up and spent most of the night with the Lord all night long. He said, thank you for interceding for me and going on my behalf when I felt like I couldn't, didn't want to go in the presence of God. You lifted me up and went in my behalf. That's what intercession prayer is. That's what being a priest of God is, is interceding for others. Jeremy, come on up here. You're on this side. Jalen, you know, come on over here. You're on this side. These are my two young men. Have a seat right, right down there. There you go. There you go. This is a crippled guy over here. Poor thing. He's been crippled for many years. We'll talk about him in a minute. This over here is, this is my druggie over here. I started to make him a crackhead, but I said, that's unbelievable as much as he weighs. Amen. This would be the heaviest crackhead alive. Amen. But, Jeremy, here's, he's had it rough. He was raised, we're going to make him raised in a, in a lost home. Jeremy has been all of his life, he's had to make his own way in the streets. He's had to make his own way. He's had to, he's had to take care of himself, but he got tied up in some things. and He hadn't had much to do with God in his life. He's just, we're going to make him just, just lost. But even though he was lost, he went to work, made a living, got a wife, got a house, got a car. He's living, doing everything, but he can't leave them old drugs alone. He just can't, he can't, he just, he's just hung, he's just hung on to them. And that part of his life is that, and he's heard that God had helped folks and Somebody just told him, said, why don't you just ask God for help? For this illustration, I'm going to be God just a minute. I know that takes a lot more imagination than to imagine him as a crackhead. <laughs> this one over here, Jalen, he's saved. But Jalen got involved in some things in his life in a immoral relationship. He's been living with somebody for several years, unmarried. He's been 
going places he shouldn't go. He's been getting drunk every weekend. He's been doing things he shouldn't do. He's been away from God for a long time. He's, he's, he remembers when he got saved. He remembers coming to know the Lord. But he's been away from God for a long time. A long time. He remembered what it was to be saved. He remembered what it was to walk with God. But he's been away from Him so long that the voice of God has gotten so weak in his life, can't even hear it anymore. Jalen's had some accidents and he's crippled. His legs won't work and he can't walk. But he don't want to get right. He likes his life like it is. He's still a child of God, but he likes his life just like it is right now. He's got enough of God in him that he's miserable. <laughs> he's got enough of the world in him that he's miserable there too. He's just in a miserable place in his life. He don't want to get right, but he don't want to be crippled anymore either. I'm going to be God. <laughs> I'm sitting around watching over the universe. He's lost. Totally against God. But he's going to ask something. What you got? Dear God, please help me. I can't go on with life. I, I'm going to lose everything. My house, my car, wife, kids. I just need your help here, God. Hmm. He wants my help. What about you? Dear God, I'm crippled. I, I can't get around like I used to. I, just, I need your help, but... I've been asking and asking and trying to get to me, God. I just need your help and I need you to heal me. All right, let me ask you a question. Did you hear either one of them want to get right with what they're doing? No. The Bible says the prayers of the wicked, listen to this now, the prayers of the wicked are an abomination unto God. Listen to that now. We think that God's like a genie in a bottle and and folks can be lost and away from God, and when they get in a financial situation, they can just call out and say, Oh God, help me. The Bible said the prayers of the wicked are an abomination unto God. That's what it says. He's not wanting to get right. He's not wanting me in his life. All he wants is help with his money. He's, losing his, he's lost his job. He's on drugs, he's away from God, he's going to lose his wife, he's going to lose his house, he's going to lose his car, so he's praying, but he's praying for money. He's serious about praying for money, he's not joking, but he's not, he's not wanting to come to me and get right. Not wanting to get right, just wants help with money. Is that a lot of folks? Do you think that's, that's where a lot of people are? Here's this saved man over here. He's living wicked away from God. Knows he's saved. Did you hear him say, God, I'm sorry for where I've been. I'm sorry of my sin. Lord, forgive me of what I've done. No. What was he asking God for? Healing. The Bible said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, he will not hear me. If I've got known sin in my life that I don't want to deal with, God chooses to say, I don't hear you. How many people you think are in this world are praying like these two guys? You think there's a lot? Savannah? Come here. Y'all know Savannah. How are you doing today? Good. Good. What's going on with you today? Well, I got up this morning and we went to sisterhood and then we had class and Come up here and sit sit with me. Come up and sit with me. Oh. And you had class? Yeah. Well do you do you love me? Mm-hmm. How much? Big as the sky. Big as the sky. Do you know what? I love you too. Do you know that? Mm-hmm. I made everything for you. I give you a sunrise this morning just for you because I know how much you love sunrises. I made a bird come by. Did you hear that bird sing outside this morning? Mm -hmm. Oh, it was just for you. What can I do for you today, baby? Can you help that man? Which, what do you mean? Him. Him?
Well, hold on just a second. Hmm. Well, I wish you wanted me. Oh, I wish you would come to me. I died to save you on the cross. You don't want nothing to do with me. But my precious child asked me to help you. So here you go. Come here, baby. How are you doing? Good. You doing good? Mm -hmm. Wow. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Help that man. Help that man? Do you know that I love you? Mm -hmm. Do you know I love to please you because you love to please me? Mm -hmm. All right. Not because of this man's sin, but because I love her. I wish she would get right. I wish she had come back to me. Maybe he will. But not because he's chosen to get right. But because my precious child that loves me and serves me asked me to. Rise up and walk. He goes back to his life. He goes back to his life. Let me ask you a question. Next time he gets in a problem, he's going to probably do the same thing. I know that. Next time he probably gets in a problem, guess what? He's probably going to do the same thing. I know that. I loved them no matter what they do. They think they can live like they want to and still ask God for their needs. But why did I take care of their needs? Because why? Because my child that loves me asked me to. You listen to me. You... As a child of God, have rights to go to the Father on other people's behalf. Don't take lightly the priesthood of the believer. God would love for them to come, but He won't make people come to Him. He has chosen to limit Himself to those that want to come, but He has access to those that love Him and those that are His child and those that are obedient to Him to spend some time in the very presence of a holy God and we have the right to intercede for other people on their behalf. You better take it very, very seriously. There is something that you can do. And the devil has made us think that it's all about them. It's not. It's about the Father and us. We have the right to intercede. <laughs> wow, what a God we serve.